Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome um, to those watching the video. I'm Meredith from Turquoise, and I'm also introducing myself to people that have already been on this for a few minutes. Um, I think some of you have attended workshops before, but a lot of you, this is the first time. Um, so like I mentioned, I share a lot of details and information, but if sometimes it's too much, like you can like pick and choose what you want to do. Basically, we're going to go over the materials for this project and then any questions you have about that. I think mostly everyone joining now has the kit, but I'm just going to briefly go over other stuff for people that um, join from the recording. Or if you wanna look for materials on your own and not from the kit, I'll also share where you can find it locally and abroad, um, just in case. Um, and then after that, we'll basically get the materials all set up and then make a bracelet or an anklet together. Um, and then the very last part is we'll learn a macrame knot called the square knot. And that's very useful in other projects. And speaking of macrame, I just wanted to show you really quickly. This is the sample for the workshop on Saturday. After Saturday's workshop, I'm gonna go on a little summer break for July, um, but there are two spots left. If you'd like to come and learn how to make this hoop, I'll hold it up in the big thing over here. Um, so it's a really cool geometric hanging, um, if that interests you at all. Um, and then after that, I'll add you onto the email list so that you'll get notified about other workshops you can join in the future because we do all types of fun stuff. And I'll probably even do like free online workshops even when I'm technically on a break. So let's get going into shell jewelry. I just wanted to talk about the materials really quickly. The most important thing is cowrie shells. So. Um, I buy a lot of cowrie shells in bulk and get it from AliExpress. If you've never ordered from AliExpress, I highly recommend going on their app and having a whole whirl around there. As long as you have a, as long as you have a PO box in um, Dubai that you can deliver to, like it can be three weeks or four weeks long, but there's such a huge variety of things there. It's like a magical land for DIY supplies. The only thing is you kind of need a bulk of um, shells because in order to find ones that all look like each other and are approximately the same size, it'll end up being like, you need like at least 50 shells to find maybe like 10 that look similar. Um, I had somebody, I think Beata, I don't know if she on here, she mentioned, or was it? Yeah, it was Beata told me that there's a place in Satwa that she found where you can find them. It's called Al Nora's uh, trading and she said it's near the big mosque and I haven't checked it out, but she sent me some photos and it seemed like they have some pretty decent supplies there. As well as a store in Dira that I definitely recommend you visit one day it's near the Dira police station, the knife knife soup knife um, police station it's called Mohammed al Kandari with a K. It's a magical land and they sometimes have cowrie shells there. But if you're really super into it, order now from AliExpress and enjoy um, when you get that received. Um, in terms of like the electroplated shell, I wanted to show you the difference between electroplated and metal. So these shells are, well, what is advertised as being cowrie shells that are plated with like a very thin metal layer. Again, these are from AliExpress, so I don't know how much uh, I trust AliExpress. <laughs> and then usually, like I said, if you order like a packet like this, like maybe 10% of it will maybe be damaged or like weird or too large or like deformed. So just keep that in mind. Like this one is cut at the wrong angle. So the one side is like super thin. So you just find like things like that. So just be aware. So that's electroplated. There's like two different colors in it too. Um, and then there are available like metal shells. So this, there's nothing natural about this except its shape. It like vaguely re resembles nature, but it's all completely metal. Um, so one quick note is that I recommend that you don't get any of your cowrie shell jewelry wet. I know that kind of goes against it. It's like a very beachy thing to wear. 
but um, take it off because all this stuff can go bad and even the shells can discolor or the cord, the beading, um, the knotting cord can also stretch out. So that's the like fancy um, cowrie shells. And then I can talk about the Chinese knotting cord. Um, I called it knotting cord. I felt like calling it Chinese knotting cord could be kind of weird these days, but apparently that's what they call it. So in the kit, most of you chose the colors that uh, were one mm thickness for um, the knotting cord. There's also this other colors like the super bright coral and this gold. And um, you can't really see this, but this one mm knotting cord is much more firm and like uh, less flexible than this one and a half mm. So if you have both, like there's a silver color of this and the gold and this bright coral, I recommend trying the, those colors second as your second bracelet and try using the firmer, stiffer um, one mm because it's easier to work with. Um, anyway, I found these from a lot of places. Uh, the best one is um, Amazon US. So if you can shop and ship or Emirates delivers it, or I think there's a few listings on Amazon AE, but it's still better to order directly from Amazon US on this one particular um, thing. And then if you, I found this at Ribbons in Satwa. Um, pretty inexpensive and they had it in a bunch of colors. So that's a good local option. And I don't see like any difference in terms of like quality. It's mostly just what colors are available locally. Um, like I said, more information than maybe you ever wanted to know. Listen, if you take away one thing from this shop or this not shop from this workshop, it's that you need to go to Dragon Mart if only to visit the bead shop in the F section. I don't know exactly the store number off the top of my head, but if you go there and you ask them, they will tell you uh, like any of the information. You have to go there. It's like mountains and mountains of bead strands. You have to dig through everything, but that's where most of this stuff came from. So like there's natural beads, turquoise, um, even like wooden beads, like honestly, you could go there and just lose yourself. Except the AC in that section is kind of bad, so maybe <laughs> bring water. But I mean, all of my like glass beads and natural beads, all of the big large ones and the small ones, I all got from that shop. And it's like, it's so amazing. You'll lose your mind. They have like glass beads. And if you're into crystals or anything like that, you can find everything there. Most jewelry making stuff. It's so, it's so worth the adventure. It definitely, if you're bored over the summer, you got to go there. Um, and then what else? So that's uh, that. Oh, the last thing is the cornerless cubes. So it took me a long time to find like metal beads that I thought looked really nice. So I found them and they're called cornerless cubes because the corners are cut off. So they become more of some other 3D shape that I don't know. Um, and I have them available in two different sizes for the, the kit. And I haven't found this locally. This is an Etsy find. Uh, and I recommend ordering it from Etsy. If they don't ship here, maybe sending it to like a shop and ship or Emirates delivers, but it's definitely worth it. And you get a pretty large strand. So um, that's good, these bold colors. So if you have any more questions about any of these materials, you can ask it now, or if you think about it later, like you can interject and ask. But I think that is all the materials. The other thing I send you, was the lighter, which I found at gas stations. Um, and then I sent you a stick of washi tape, not a, like, it's like a little thing that I folded over on itself. Um, I don't know if it worked. You guys can let me know if it's still sticky or not, but you can use any kind of masking tape, but I get the washi tape at, what's it called? Uh, Daiso. I like going there for their stuff. Daiso is really fun too. Um, I didn't mention this in materials, but I said it in the beginning. 
If you have any kind of cloth or towel down, it can really help so that the beads don't fly everywhere while you're making your necklace or your, not your necklace, your anklet or your bracelet. So I'm just gonna throw that down now. And then we'll just jump right into setting up our space for the making portion of this show. Um, in case you're wondering about this little cute microfiber towel, it's also a Daiso purchase. I think it's so nice. <laughs> um, so also in addition to sharing a lot of information, you need to know that I tend to be a perfectionist. So everything that I will be sharing today will be from the perspective of someone who likes things to be perfect. And I recognize that that's not everyone in the world and that sometimes art and how you feel and how you want something to look can be more important than perfection. So just keep that in mind, but I'm very structured. So what I like to do is like lay everything out, how I'm gonna design my bracelet or my anklet. I like all my shells to face in the same direction <laughs> or if not the same direction, if you're using different sizes, I took a lot of extra time to pick out the right the same sizes for you and your kits. So I saved you this <laughs> work. But if you do have different sizes at home or you're doing this on your own, I sometimes taper them out. So start largest in the center and then work my way out to smaller. It's kind of up to you. And then, so now we're gonna also uh, put the beads or anything else in between that you wanna do. Like I said, I included so many materials in the kit that you're gonna have way more than you're gonna need to do. I have very small wrists. So depending on whether you want to do a bracelet or an anklet where it'll need to be larger, um, you can lay it out. But like, I already know this is going to be too many things. And I'm going to do beads in between too. So keep it in mind when you add in beads, it also makes it um, much bigger because of the knots. So you can just take a few minutes here while I'm yammering on to just kind of lay out a general idea for a design. Um, if you don't really necessarily, you can always change it. No, nobody is, um, uh, there's nothing wrong with changing your mind in your middle of your design. And if you have nails or tweezers, it can, it can be um, easy to like open up the knots and change things. So I'm going to use this nice like sea foam. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this on camera. If not, I can switch um, switch the colors. And I'm going to use like a matching beads. You can get really particular about like even getting the tones of the beads, beads to match. All right, so I think that's my general setup of my bracelet. This is actually a bracelet that a lot of you have as well that you had said that you really wanted to do. Um, so you can follow along for this design. All right, now for everyone with the kit, you already have your string already cut for you, but in case you wanna make other bracelets, I'm just gonna unwind this and show you what it is. So this piece that held everything together was what we're gonna to use to make the closure, the, the adjustable closure at the end. So you can just put that aside, but for your reference, that's about like 55 to 60 centimeters long. And that's mostly just so it's easier when you're making the knot, it doesn't bother you. And then you have two pieces of string that are approximately, honestly, I really do it by eyesight, but I, I did it and then I measured it for you. So it's usually about one meter long, at least. It's always better to have enough string than to like not run out and then you have to change your design. So if you don't have like a measuring thing at home, uh, from like your fingertips all the way to your opposite shoulder, depending on how big you are, is about like one meter. So if you're ready to go, um, you're gonna take, 
both of your one meter pieces of string, join them together and then find the center. So you'll just bring the two ends together and then slide your fingers up. So you find the center top loop here. And we're gonna go over an overhand knot first, which is just, I'm sure a knot that everyone knows. You basically just take about the approximate center of the two strings together and the, the four ends are loose at the bottom. And then you're just gonna make a loop with both of the strings and then wrap one of the tails around and pull it through the loop. So I didn't even know this had a name till very recently, but yeah, it's called the overhand knot, or at least some people call it that. I'll just show you one more time because you'll be doing this knot a lot tonight. It's basically what you do each time you're going to join uh, up cowrie shells. So you just make a loop and then wrap one of the set of tails around and pull it through your loop. And I'll show you a little trick to make sure it's tightened. So you pull it tight like this, and then it can be, be kind of messy still. So if you take two of the strings on the one side and grab them both in opposite hands and pull them apart, it automatically like tightens everything out and makes it look really beautiful. I'm gonna, can you see my beautiful knot? So I've done it on that one side, so do it on both sides. So take the other set of strings, pull them apart like that. And then you have a beautiful overhand knot to start out with. If this is too far away, I may, I'll may zoom in a little bit, let's see. Um, so we'll have an overhand here in the center. All right, so I sent you a lighter. If that is nerve wracking for you, I, there's, I know a lot of people have never really used lighters before in their life. So um, if you're feeling <laughs> uh, risky, risk taking, you can use it to, um, let me get this all. You can use it to take the ends and make them more, um, basically they become more like needles and firmer. So it's just like really quick blast of heat. And then just be really careful. Um, I like to just kind of make it pointy. If you're gonna to try to get through some of the smaller beads, it can really help to be um, a little harder. So if you wanna try it, just be really careful because you can burn your fingers. Just wanna make the ends a little bit harder. It's your If it's your first time using a lighter, you just kind of roll, press down on the two wheels while you're pulling your finger down towards the little red switch. And of course, if you're doing this with kids, I recommend the parents doing it and not the children. If you've got the AC on too, maybe you can like just make sure everything's okay. So that's that. Um, if you don't want to like risk and do the lighter part now, you don't need to do it now. Uh, but mostly we will need to light use the lighter in the middle of the project or towards the end with the closure. So I managed to actually tie my knot kind of not in the center, but it's totally fine. I'll just like be aware of it and make sure that I add a few more shells and beads onto this side. Or if you want to give yourself, if you love picking out knots, you can start that process too. Okay. So because we made the knot in the center of the, the string, technically we should start from the center of your design. So you want to take like one of the cowrie shells in the center, although it can be from anywhere, and then we'll work our way out. Um, I'm going to show you first how to do the cowrie shell because that's what most people are doing. Um, I think everybody has some cowrie shells. So what you want to do is take one of the strings and then enter it in through the top of your shell. So I'm going to stop this and restart it again because I feel like. All right. So 
I'll just show you that one more time. So the top of the cowrie shell and then the back of the cowrie shell. So you want one of your strings on this side to go through the top and then you'll want the other string to come up from the bottom. So this is the other string. I'm gonna send it up through the bottom. And then you can kind of grab both strings and then slide your shell all the way up next to your over, first overhand knot. And if you wanna look at it from the side, it looks basically your string is making an X inside of your cowrie shell. And I think for this part, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so it's very clear for you. So yeah, you'll have one that's going in through the top and out the bottom, and then the other string is going up from the bottom and coming out the top. And then here's the tricky part. I'm going to show you up close my version of closing this, and then I'll show you a trick on how to close it from another, another way. So what I like to do is use one of my fingers at the back to hold the back string where it is and then use my dominant hand, whichever it is, right or left-handed, and make another loop. So we're gonna make another overhand knot here. So you make a loop and then grab the tails through the loop. The trick is getting it as close to the cowrie shell as possible. So I just kind of, my fingers have learned a technique to kind of keep the knot nice and large until you're right next to the shell. And then it just gently, I like use these fingers at the back here to pull this, all the strings forward while this forefinger, the first finger just kind of holds everything where it is. So you're gonna have lots of chances to practice this. And then I really only tighten it when it's right next to the shell. And like I said, my fingers have only learned how to do this by practicing. It's definitely fiddly the first time you're doing it you will probably have to undo a few knots tonight. So if you're already unhappy with your knot, don't hope that you can just tighten it at the end, <laughs> just take it out. And I'm gonna show you one way to do this with an object. So if you have a pin or a needle, I have a little plastic needle, even if you've got a, a pen at home or a pencil, it just needs to have a tapered end here that'll be easy to slide off. So again, you make your overhand knot. So you take the string, make a loop, and then pull the tails through the loop. And then what you do is you insert your object into the center and then hold it in place there while you're pulling the string out. And it just kind of magically keeps the loop as close as possible. And then you gently pull this out while keeping everything where it is and it gets you pretty close. And you use the same trick again to tighten it. So you take both string ends and pull them apart in both opposite directions and you'll gain like a little bit of movement there to tighten it up. I am, I still find that I like doing my finger, just using my fingers and just like kind of feeding the string, but this is a good alternative um, to try. You do kind of want it to be tight. I do feel like that one's loose. So here where our nails are your best friend, or if you've got a pair of like really fine tweezers, I just super tightened this. So it's going to drive me wild to get this loose again. But like I said, hopefully you won't have to do too many times tonight, but I think everybody in this journey will probably have to do this at one point. In, while I'm like fiddling with this and dealing with my perfectionism, does anybody have any questions so far? You can either unmute or um, type in the type in the chat. Okay, I have deemed this proper now. So a lot of you are going to add in beads. I don't see any questions in the chat. I don't think. Okay. Um, I think probably almost all of you will be adding beads at some point. So um, depending on how thick your string is and how big your opening is on your beads, you may only be able to fit one strand or, or both. Um, for these little tiny glass beads, most likely you'll only be able to fit one strand through. 
Um, so what I want to just tell you is that usually when you've done your um, your knot, there's always one strand that's on top, like closer to the front of the cowrie shell versus the bottom. So if you are going to add another shell in here, you want this top one to be the one that goes in through the top so that they can all be facing up. Or if you're only adding, if you're adding one bead and it only fits on one string, then you want to put that bead on the top string here versus the one that's on the bottom. So I'm going to add this little tiny glass bead. Another reason why I sent you multiple glass beads is that their whole size is not always the same. So some of them will be, um, some of them will be having bigger openings. So this will actually go in, but this string wasn't hard enough to send it through. So I just made it point here like a needle. And if it, now that it's hard, it goes all the way through. I just saw a question come on the chat. So let me answer it. Um, is it made the same with the other shell? Uh, yeah, so are you talking about like these shells, like the electroplated? Because it'll be the same thing with electroplated shells. Or um, I only sent some of these out, but there are like these little shells that you can add. Um, I don't think anybody got any other kinds of shells, but yeah, it's going to be the same thing. So I've added this very small bead on the just the top here. And then depending on your design, then you just, or if you want to, I always think it looks good if you add an, another overhand knot after this. I want to show you a few designs that uses different bead designs. So this one um, has like a series of beads and then a cowrie shell and then single beads and the series of the design again. And then if you really want to get wild with it, you can start adding multiple beads. So before tying the knot, like here I added two of the cornerless cubes and in between them I added one of these beads on each of the strings. So you can kind of get creative and start making interesting designs playing with the um, two different strings. On this one, I'm making the style that a lot of you really liked, where it has the glass bead on top and then three of the cornerless cubes on the bottom to make like almost like a little flower. So I'll show you how to do that now. And then I'm going to show you also how to add a corner or the bigger beads that fit two strings. So there's also this really cute design where you put like three of the little beads surrounding one of the little glass beads and then tie the knot. And it makes like a little half flower. So to show you the overhand knot again up close, like how I do it, I keep it loose and big till almost the last possible thing and my thumb stays here on the side of the string to keep it in place. And then my pinky and my other finger kind of, they're the ones pulling the string down or away. That was a really good one. Maybe like talking your way through it helps. And then of course, pulling it on either side then gets you a really nice clean knot. So that's another fun design to play with when you're you know, when you have the two different strings there. All right, so let's just check a big cornerless cube. I do love the cornerless cubes because it's so easy. <laughs> they have a big, huge opening, so you can definitely fit both strings. Um, but if you feel like I fit both strings through the little tiny cornerless cubes before, what I like to do just to make it easier is I like to send one through first and then hold it down in my hand so that it's right next to the wall of the bead. So then you have space to send the other string through the top. Oh, I sent it through the wrong side. <laughs> so anyway, but that's 
with the corner, the bigger cornerless cubes, it's pretty easy. You can experiment and see what works good. But like I said, I think having the shells lay flat is like a really big thing for me. It's really hard to make, make sure they're all going to lay flat all the time. But if you just make sure to use this top, just check from the side and see which one is the top, that really can help. Um, and then that top string should go in through the top of the cowrie shell in through the top and then the other one it comes up from the bottom You can kind of, I do prefer this method where I just use one of my fingers to hold the bottom string of on the shell itself and then just gently guide the whole knot to the top or right next to the shell. So we'll just keep on adding the beads and the shells. I my strings are pretty uneven. So just make sure when you're adding them, you remember to switch and start adding on the other side. Otherwise, you'll end up with like one super long string and one super short string on the other side. Oh, we're early. This is great. So we've got plenty of time. Basically, we're going to just thread up your whole design. If anybody has any questions, please let me know. I feel like if you have this design, the materials for this at home, that I was noticing that the, the rose shell, the rose gold electroplated shell looks so pretty with it. So that's a good color combo. So even for like this design that I'm doing, I'm also thinking of playing with by putting the glass bead on the opposite side and then the silver beads on the top so that these little petals will alternate from the top and the bottom. So like, that's why I love shell jewelry. You can just, each piece is, will be totally different from the other one. And you can continually like try new things, even with the same materials. The string is pretty um, sturdy and hardy, so you can like unknot it and re-knot it like lots of times and it won't thread or become or unthread or become like tattered. So you can really change your mind a lot. Make any changes. It's just the fiddly part of doing the overhand knot. That's cute. I think we'll just like take the next like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, to just finish putting your design on.
I'll ask you for some feedback to like see where you're at in a few minutes. Just please remember to, you can get in the zone so easily, you forget about the other side. Just remember to switch to your other side. <laughs> Naveen wants to know, can you please show us the back of the bracelet? Sure. So here's the front, the little cute petals, and then the back looks like that. So you have the like the opening, the circular openings of the cowrie shells. So I like all the like the, the front with the teeth, <laughs> the little shell teeth to all show that that way. Also, as you're working, it can be really good to just keep checking on your wrist or on your ankle or wherever um, you're going to be using the bracelet, just to keep checking and making sure that you're not adding too much. Because if you do add too much, then it'll just like hang off your wrist or your ankle. So you can kind of just judge how much more you need to do. Like I said, some of these glass beads, the holes are like impossibly small. If it's starting to drive you crazy, you've tried the lighter. And if you're risky enough, if you light it up and then kind of grab it and stretch it out, it becomes like long at the end, like a needle. Oh, it worked. But I've definitely burnt myself that way. So just be a little bit careful.
that little last glass bead that I did, it didn't work on one of the ends. So one of the ends must be smaller. I just turned it over and tried the other side and then it worked. So that's another option. So I just want to really quickly show you. Um, I'm just trying my bracelet on now from the work that I've done. And I'm getting to the point now where I can see it coming on both sides of my wrists. So then you can kind of see like maybe um, one more shell on each side and then one final of these uh, grouping here. So then you can kind of like plan and see what can work, keep going. And if it's for the ankle, you do the same thing as well down there. And whenever you guys are close to finishing or you're finished, if you could just let me know, then I can, can you show how to tie the knot closer to the shell? Yeah. I'm gonna do one more shell so I'll show you that. Okay, so I'll just go over it one more time. Let me see which side. I'll put it on this side. All right, so if you've already added shells on before, the first thing you wanna do is just make sure that you're putting whatever um, string naturally lies on the top, that'll go into the top of your cowrie shell and then come out the bottom. Oops, there we go. And then the other one goes from the bottom up to the top. All right, now here's what you're asking about is tying the knot very close. So the first thing is making sure that the cowrie shell is close to the knot that already exists. And then what you wanna do is use, what I would suggest is like your non-dominant hand. So I hold the bottom of the shell, that string there, I hold it with like my middle finger on my left hand. So then I know that that rope really isn't going to move and then you can it's harder to hold the string from here because it's very small amount 
but that other finger is still there, my thumb. And then I use my dominant hand, which is my right one, to make the, the knot or the, yeah, to make the knot and make the loop. So you make the loop and then pull the tails through the loop. Now, here is the technique I've learned that leaving it really big until you get close to the shell is good. And then I hold this thumb very close to where the knot's going to be tied to keep that. <laughs> Sounds like cute dogs that are guarding the house. And then I use yes. my other fingers on the right hand to kind of pull the string down while keeping the thumb there. The thumb is very important there. If I just pull this string, the knot moves. So the thumb is like, or whatever finger you use is a very important guardian to keep the knot up. So wait. Shh. Shh. <laughs> so I'll just show you again. So setting the knot up there, and then this finger here is like a barrier so that nothing moves. So I leave it there while using my other fingers to pull the string down little bit by little bit. I think like smaller movements are better. And even though that looks kind of messy there, I, it's still kind of in the right position where I want it. So I just nestle it up there and then keep pulling with my other fingers down. And even though it looks messy, one string is longer than the other one, you can just easily fix that by grabbing both strings and then pulling them either direction. And then you get a knot like super close to the shell. I can't fit the small beads even in only one string. <laughs> yeah. So then I would recommend, um, I don't know if you can see this here. If you're willing to like be a little risky, you can see, maybe you can see, that I managed to get one of my strings to have like a little point on it. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's really good if there's like a little hair of a string that comes out and it becomes more like a needle. That one's still very thick. So what you can do if, if you can manage with the lighter, you're gonna light the end, blow in a little bit, and then use your finger to like make it skinnier at the end. And if you're lucky, there'll be some little bit of the hot glue that you'll manage to get to become more of a point, and then it becomes more like a needle. It could also be the beads, like some glass beads are just like very small and they're just gonna drive you crazy. But if you just try to use the lighter more on the end and then carefully like use your fingers to like make it more of a point, you'll be more likely to get it in. You could also just try another one of the beads. Are you, maybe you're doing the little pink ones because I feel like most people use the tiny little pinks. I almost ran out of them. So let me see if the tiny little pinks are super small. Well, they're okay. I think just using the lighter on the ends and making it more of a point like that can be really, can help. If you're too afraid of the lighter, maybe there's someone in your family that you can try. Or if you have like those finger guards from, from sewing, uh, you can also use that. They do sell, oh, let me see if I can show you. I've never used it because I guess I'm a risk taker like that, but they do sell, if you really get into it, let me find it. It's like, um, I forget what they call it. Let me find it. Ah, I bought it one time figuring that people that were afraid of lighters could use it, but I just never got around to it. So it's, if you look on the, my big screen, it's called the thread zap. So it's a thread burner. So if you don't want to use the lighter, it heats it with the 
push of a button. I mean, if you're afraid of a lighter, that's kind of a scary thing too. <laughs> Red burner. So, I mean, that's something that you could look into getting, but like I said, I usually just do the, the lighter. All right, so how are you guys looking? I wanted us to start working on the closure around 6.05. <laughs> so we can finish on time. No need, I don't need to rush you. Um, but I may in five minutes start moving on. So I'm just kind of measuring mine. I've got super small wrist, but I actually can do another one of these beads. Oh, and it's perfect, even the right way. Um, when you're measuring the back of your bracelet, you also want to leave room for your closure. So it doesn't need to like super match up with each other. I'm making this super match up with each other because I know someone with a bigger wrist is going to be wearing this. Um, but for you, you'll probably want to stop when you have about that much space at the back of your wrist where it still has some space to move around. And I'll just show you the, in the closure that we'll be working on. So here's a, another bracelet that I made. This is a pretty small closure, but we're gonna do the macrame square knot. And this is so that you can easily open and adjust your bracelet and close it easily. So it's adjustable to, so you can big to put it, make it big to put it on and then tighten it. And it just looks nice and neat. So we're gonna be doing some square knots uh, for macrame to make that. How are you doing, Mary? Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. So far, so good. Do you want to show me what your thing looks like? Oh, nice. Lovely. I, I do very simple. Yeah. <laughs> You've probably been ready for like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing with the other stuff. Yeah. Because now you guys have so many other bracelets. You can start dreaming of what you'll do next. All right, so how is everybody else doing? Naveen? You're okay? <gasps> so cute! I love it. Looking good. How are you doing, Rachel? Oh, love, love, love. Oh, because you got the extra little shells. So you were the one, you were the, the only one that asked for these. No judgment, everybody. That's not safe. It's not good. So cute. Okay. So I feel like even if you're not completely done, 
you can still kind of watch along and uh, get the general idea. So what I like to do, what I've just found has worked is lay my uh, shells upside down. So the back side is showing. And then you take the um, four strands, the, four, the two strands from the top, bring them down around the top and then bring the bottom ones up. So you have the four strands laying over each other. And if you have that tape, can you guys let me know if that tape I sent you is still sticky or if you can tear it apart? <laughs> I'm using the same tape from the kit or any tape from home. Just grab a small piece. It's just easier if these four strands stay together at the top. So at the very top here, if you just tape them to your table. I moved my cloth over so that it's easier to do this on like a hard surface. And then you'll grab your 60 centimeter extra piece. So some designs, oh, I would this one actually, I wanted to use a different one. So this is another thing that you can do if you have another color of string that you like, you can use a different one for the class. It doesn't always have to match. I'm actually, it'll be good. It'll be easier for you guys to see which one is which as well. So I'm going to use this silver piece as my one for the square knot. So you find the center again, the top loop of there, and then you're going to try to put that top loop underneath these four strands at the top. It doesn't have to be super in the center because this is such a big piece, you're going to have extra anyway. Now, I, I know Naveen's done macrame before, so she knows this square knot. But in case any of you, um, I'm gonna move this over a little bit, just to make sure you can see, and it's in the center. Um, but in case you forget how to do it and you don't wanna watch this video again, you just Google square knot for macrame and it'll come up. There's tons of tutorials for it. Um, these four strands are just going to be running down the center. We're calling, they're called filler ropes or knot bearing ropes. They're just literally in the middle of the knot. And the one that you've added, the new 60 centimeter piece will be the knotting strings. That's the one that's going to do all the work with the knotting. And there's two parts to this one. So we'll do one action starting from the left side. And then we'll do the exact same thing, but just starting from the right side. So I'll just show you how this looks and I'll do it a few times. So as will you. Um, so basically you take the string on the left side and you're gonna make a figure four. It's not gonna look like a four right now. So let's call it a nine. We're gonna make the number nine here with the left side cord and it goes over to the right. Then I'm gonna take the right side cord and put it over the front of the bottom of the, the number nine, and then take the bottom piece of that same right cord, send it behind all the middle, and then out of the nine shape. So I'll just show you what that looks like without tightening it. So it looks like you're starting to tie your shoe, but that this four strings are running through the middle of it. And then you bring it up to the top of your thing and pull them tight. And that's the first part. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna start on the right side and we'll do a P shape to get the right string over to the left and then take the left string, put it over the bottom of the, the P and then lift everything, oh gosh. Lift the four middle strands up and take this left side string, send it under and then through the P. And then pull, pull it up to the top, uh, like gently guide it up. And once it's up towards the top, then you pull on both strings evenly. And this is very, a little bit hard to see, but it, if you've done it correctly, there should be like an arrow shape. So that arrow shape is telling you, in case you forget, that you need to start on the left side now. So I'm gonna again, do it really slow so that you can see this again. 
So we're gonna start on the left side and make either what looks like a figure four, if you hold it there, or a number nine. So that's the, the left side string that goes over to the right. And then I'm gonna take the right string, make sure it goes over the bottom of the nine first and then take the end and send it behind the middle four and then through the nine, the round nine shape. And then gently pull it up to the top and then pull on both strings to tighten. That's the first part. And the second part is starting on the right side. So make a P and then take the left side string, make sure that it goes over the bottom of the P and then lift everything up and send the tail end through the nine to get it to come over to this side and then tighten it up. So you'll see now there's two of these angles. There's one there, actually there's, <laughs> there's an angle here and then there's an angle here as well. They're very tiny. In macrame when we're using big strings, this is much more apparent. Honestly, no one's gonna look at your closure that much. So if it doesn't seem quite right, no one's ever really gonna look at it and be sad unless you're selling your products. So um, you can try to do your best with the square knot, but it's not like gonna make or break your bracelet. So again, I'll just keep doing this. You, um, if you've already gotten it, you'll just do it as, as long as you want it to be. So some people like longer class, some people like shorter ones. It's really your preference. So I'm gonna start on the left string and bring it over to the right in the shape of a nine. And then bring the right cord or right string over the bottom of the nine first. And then lift all the middle up and send the tail of the right string through. And if you forget which string you're supposed to do next, you just look at the arrow. So my arrow is pointing here. So then you know you have to start with the right side to do the next knot. So uh, P, the key part is making sure that this, the string first goes over the bottom before it goes behind and through. Are there any questions about the macrame knot, the square knot? You're gonna get a few times to practice it here. So I feel like that's pretty good for my closure. Maybe one more. Yeah, that's good. So I gave you much longer pieces of string for this, but that's because it's much easier to do this knot if you have longer strings. The shorter it gets, the more difficult it is to like manage which string is which, especially when you don't have two tones. Sometimes you can get confused which string is which. So here, when it's nice and long, that way you're not like struggling to catch ends while trying to figure out what everything is. And then now here's the part where you're kind of required to use the lighter, even if you don't like it that much. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim this off, but then we're gonna secure this. So basically, I don't know what substance this uh, string is, but when you burn it, it becomes hard. So we're gonna basically fuse these strings to the last knot here so that it doesn't come undone. And you just, maybe before you get to trimming. I always just give this one more tug to just make sure it's like super tight. 
and then trim off pretty close because you don't want to burn too much of this because it can literally like flame up. So you don't want to get too close where the knot stop starts to unravel, but you don't want to be too far away where like you have to light the lighter for more than like one second. So I'll just show you what it looks like. So if you guys are busy, just stop what you're doing to just watch this because I will only do it like two times. Um, so it's pretty short there. I just take the lighter, light it up. So I've got my AC on. And then once I, I just blow on it and then just tap it to make sure that it like fuses to the knot there. So you can really pretty easily see that like what you're attaching to. You just want to make sure you don't use it to one of your bracelet things because then the enclosure won't close or won't move, sorry. And then I'm going to do the other side now. Like I said, my AC is on, so my, my flame is kind of going wild. But usually it just is like one second with the flame and then blow on it and then tap, tap, tap to like secure it. So you have to be careful. And then this, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because now it's not as important to be far away, but more you can see everything. So now actually I think it's better on the white, so it's not so busy. So now technically, if everything has gone correctly, you can just pull on the ends of your string and then you have a closed bracelet, which is amazing. And it looks so lovely. I love this, so nice. Um, so the last finishing part here, I'll just show you like some samples. So what we'll do once we have the closure is we're going to kind of measure how wide you want this to open. And then we'll add beads onto the end and do a final knot and then one final burn with the lighter to seal the knots and then we're finished. So just to make sure about what size you're going to do, you want to open it up on both sides evenly and make sure that it can pass over your, your hand. So it shouldn't be like super tight. It should be like easy to come on and off when you have this open, like that's when the bracelet will be completely open like this. This is actually an inklet, that's why it's huge like this. For an inklet, it'll be much bigger because you have to make sure that it passes over your heel and the top of your foot at the same time. So that's why it'll be much bigger than a bracelet, if that's what you're doing. And because I'm making this for a friend, I might make this a little bit bigger, just just because when you're making it for other people, you don't want them to have like a problem. So I'll just pull a little bit more on both sides. Just to make sure it'll happen. And it'll also about be the length of the tails. So when you have your bracelet closed or anklet closed, they'll have like little tails that will dangle from your wrist or from your ankle. So they'll be a little bit longer than this length here. So just take the middle of your bracelet and stretch it out. Make sure that these both sides are approximately the same length. And then what you'll do is you'll take both of the strings on either side or one of the sides and you're gonna make a knot. So it depends if you want your, so here I've kept them together and put one bead on both strings, which I think is usually the pretty typical part. But what you can do is you can actually add beads on these individually. So you can tie a knot here on each one and put a bead on each one if you want. I think for me, I'm going to do something similar to here, or am I? Sometimes if you have two different types of beads, it's kind of cute if you put one of each on each of the strands. So maybe I'm going to have to do that. <laughs> so I'll show you the, the two strand way. So if you want the two, well, what you can do, you can make one solid knot up here and then have them dangle with the different things, or you can do two separate knots on the string. I think, I don't know. <laughs> 
So it'll be like a knot. Yeah, so I'm gonna do double knot with no. <laughs> I'm gonna do individual knots. That was quite a decision. So I'll just do a simple overhand knot on each string and then add my beads onto each one of the strings. So I'm gonna do last bead on one. You can also stagger them as well if you're gonna have two. And then I'll add a cornerless cube on the other. And then basically you'll tie a knot after it on both and then burn. So once you've attached your beads on, again, you're gonna just trim off pretty close to the last knot and then use the lighter to seal that. I think I made mine a little bit too long. And just in case you're curious what it looks like when there's two that dangle, it looks like that, as opposed to the two connected with only one bead. So in case you're still on the fence. Does anyone have any questions that they've been holding on to for a while about any aspect of shell jewelry? Anything like from materials to designs? Something you want me to like go over again? Anything? If you get like a little gooey like hair here, you just light it up, it like quickly burns off too. Let me show you my finished product. So cute. I love it. That's a very sweet design. I think someone, can you show how to do the closing knot, the square knot, please? Yeah, sure. First, I'm just gonna admire this for one second. It's so cute. <laughs> I love the two danglies. All right, so let me show you, I'll use these scrap pieces here to like represent the bracelet. Okay, so these are 
these are my four bracelet things. So you take the strands from the top and the strands from the bottom and make sure that your bracelet is face down. And then I'm gonna use um, another colored string so it's easier for you to see. All right, so what you wanna do is take your like 50 to 60 meter, no, centimeter piece of string, find the center and then put that center underneath the four strings at the top of the place where you wanna do your closure knot. All right, now, so, oh, this kind of, what is going on here? There we go. Um, so we're gonna start, this knot has two parts and the silver one, the, the piece you just added is gonna be the one doing all the work. And we're gonna start on the left side and do an action and then we'll do the same thing mirrored on the right side. So the left side here is going to cross over the front of all the four bracelet pieces. Usually it's a figure four shape but because this isn't very bendy, we're gonna call it a number nine or it is very bendy, it won't like do that. And then what you wanna do is take the right piece, make sure it goes over the bottom of the figure nine, and then take its tail and send it under all four strings in the middle, and then pull it through the number nine. And then when you're, you have that knot formed, it'll look like a loop in the center here, and the four strands are running through it. Get it up to the top and then pull on both ends to tighten it. So that's the first side. And then the next part is we're gonna start on the right side and make a number, no, a letter P. And then for the left string, it goes over the bottom of the P and then lift the, big, the four in the middle and then send its tail through the P and then pull both sides so that it tightens up here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So it's hard to see with this such small string, but there, those two different strings should be like forming an arrow shape there. And if you forget which one you need to do, that's pointing to the string that you should start with next. So we're gonna start again on the left and make a number nine with the left string that then goes over to the right. And then the right side string, make sure that you go over the bottom of the nine and then take the right string's bottom tail and send it underneath the middle four strings from the bracelet and pull it out of the nine shape and then pull on both sides to tighten it up. And then the second part of the knot is P. So taking the right string over to the left side using the P shape, make sure the left string goes over the bottom of the P first before you take the tail and send it behind the middle four and then through the P shape. And you just keep going until you're happy with the length. So here are just a couple versions of like different lengths of what they look like. I think I always do about that size. <laughs> I think I did this one shorter and I didn't really like it short. So I never did it short, like crunched little again. So is that better for you guys? If you still want me to show it one more time, just let me know. So I think that's like everything that I wanted to share about doing shell um, jewelry. But I'm gonna totally, oh, I just got my phone up. I'm gonna totally stay on the, 
um, on the workshop here for any more questions that you have, because I think maybe some of you aren't quite finished yet. But I'll probably, if there aren't any like super pressing questions, I'll probably end the recording and then you guys can ask any more questions. So um, just to let you all know, people watching the recording and ones that are live here, even if you get stuck like sometime in the future and you have a question about anything having to do with DIY, not just like shell jewelry, I'm always here like very available and very responsive usually um, to help you in any way I can. Like my whole goal with doing all of this is to teach people and that they enjoy making things with their, with their own two hands. Um, so anything I can do to help that, like I'm always available. So please let me know anything, email, messaging on social media, it's fine. So if you wanna follow me there, I share all types of tutorials all the time on Instagram. It's Turquoise Boutique Studio, same thing on Facebook. And I'm on TikTok now and YouTube. Um, but TikTok is my personal account, Mayor Houston. I just felt like, oh, I wanted to like, just do whatever I wanted over there without being a business, but I'm really enjoying it. So also on TikTok and hopefully you guys can join for an in-person workshop when I start them back again after I have a little summer break. So I'm gonna stop the recording and just say thank you for coming guys. Um, but I'll stay on for a little bit longer for anybody else that has more questions. If this little thing had come up, so then I could stop the recording. <laughs> <laughs>